معرفة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session, let us discuss about Sukuk structures So let us try to understand some basic uh, important points in a sukuk. So for example, let us consider this. Now, this could be a company. When I say company, this could be any kind of company which is involved in production, distribution. This could be a financial institution. And this could be, for example, a sovereign. meaning to say this could be a country and we understand that each one of them have their own financial needs a country would require funds for many different activities a company would require funds a financial institution would require funds so in a sukuk structure generally these are the main obligors or the clients who would require funding the best option for them to do is to issue a sukuk for example if a company wants to raise uh, liquidity globally and have uh, a very competitive pricing they may look at going and issuing a sukuk for example if there is a financial institution which is majorly an Islamic financial institution and would like to raise funds from the market. An easy and more acceptable and more commercially viable source would be to issue a sukuk. So we have to understand that the first important aspect or the, first, the most important, uh, I mean to say, stakeholder in a sukuk is the obligor or the customer who would want to raise funds for its own financial needs. Having said this, the next step is how the sovereign or a company or a financial institution can raise a fund through a sukuk and what are the main questions which they have to address before thinking of issuing a sukuk. The first main important point is that we need to realize, we need to think is that what is the asset? So as we were discussing, Sukuk asset. We understand that in every sukuk there has to be an asset and what are the basic elements which are important in terms of asset are number one this asset has to be qualified what it means is that we should be in a position to very clearly describe what exactly the asset is, where exactly the asset is. It has to be quantified. What it means is that we need to know the specifications of the asset. For example, if the asset is uh, a real estate asset, we should know what is the size of the real estate, uh, what is the uh, shape of the real estate, so on and so forth. It needs to be quantified or if it is in a, uh, or if it's a Murabaha Sukuk where we are uh, selling certain 
commodities so we need to know the quantity of the commodity which is being sold so it needs to be quantified the other is this asset needs to have a value what it means is that for example you cannot uh, use barren land or you cannot use something which has no marketable value as an underlining asset in a sukuk so whatever you use as an asset in a sukuk needs to have a value the other important point for the sukuk asset is that it has to be revenue generating especially this becomes more important in an asset based sukuk so for example if it's an ijara based sukuk what we mean is that this asset should be leased back to the obligor so that this asset generates certain income which income could be shared with the investors so this asset has to be revenue generating now in terms of whether the asset could be tangible or intangible we have seen that the asset can either be a tangible asset or it can be an intangible asset when i say it can be a tangible asset here i am talking about the nature of the asset so we are talking about the real estate we have also seen intangible assets for example in terms of uh, some of the sukuks which were issued by uh, some of the institutions and sovereigns that the assets were intangible for example like marketing rights or certain concession agreements so what we uh, we are trying to say is that in terms of the nature of the assets the assets could either be tangible or could be intangible but what we have to be very clear is that they have to be qualified quantified they need to have a value and they have to be revenue generating so if the asset qualifies these things then it could be used as an as an underlining asset in a sukuk transaction otherwise it cannot be used as an underlining asset in a sukuk transaction so for example you cannot use a barren piece of land uh, as an underlining asset in a sukuk for example if you are not able to qualify what exactly that asset is then you cannot use that in a sukuk uh, to structure a sukuk or you are not able to quantify it even then you are not in, uh, then you will not be able to use that in a sukuk as a sukuk asset let us here discuss about now to issue a sukuk generally or majorly what we have seen is that there is an spv okay so for example if this is an spv spv stands for special purpose vehicle what it means is that in commercial transactions or in big ticket financing transactions generally a shell company is created for the purpose of the financing or the purpose of the structure of this specific financing so to just to take an example so if there is a company and if this company wants to issue a sukuk then this company cannot directly go and raise funds but this company has to raise funds through a structure in the form of a company which will be a special purpose vehicle what are the advantages the main advantages for forming a special purpose vehicle is that in a special purpose vehicle there are no taxation issues because generally the special purpose vehicles are set up in tax free zones that is the one main advantage the other main advantage of uh, 
forming an SPV is the company uh, which wants to issue a Sukuk. If this company goes bankrupt, then that bankruptcy will not affect the transaction. The transaction, because the financing has been raised through an SPV, and hence this SPV is bankruptcy remote. So that is the other main advantage, meaning to say bankruptcy remote. These are the two main reasons why uh, an SPV is used to issue a Sukuk and not directly a company issues a Sukuk.